Well, hello there and welcome. Today we'll be looking at something called Spectre WM. This is our tiling window manager and uh, well, there we go. I'll be looking over it today, I'll be talking about it and what I have been thinking of it so far. So I've been using this for a few days now uh, on this computer and pretty much exclusively and I have customized it to fit my needs and all of that stuff. So you know, as you can see, the it's very simple. It, there's a bar and it's a window manager. So not too much to it. Now, if you begin by being terminal, you can see that it is in fact giving me a terminal. Of course, as you can see in the bar, it actually has, I have configured this way, but it actually has just this one window name here. So the bar ends up being kind of like an app status bar thing anyway. You can see I have the workspace on the left, so I can go with the workspaces. You know, like that. And you can see it's marked by a star thing. Then you can see there's the window name at the middle. By the way, it's only one window name, it's not a window list. There is no window list built into this, uh, so take it into account. Now you can use like polybar and stuff with this as well, but I'm choosing to utilize, well, None of that. So I'm using just uh, the stock bar. So yeah, there's no window list as such, but there's this thing where you can have the window name or window class or so on. In the middle, like wherever you want. You can position these things where you want, so you can do left, middle, right, and then you can also put like spacers. So how you want to position it is up to you. I have positioned this here, this in the middle, and then time at the right, which is using the same format, the server then that's that it's a very simple bar you can't there aren't really that many things you can do as i said you can't put in like a window list you also there are also no inbuilt like uh cpu monitor things and such although i do believe you can make your own scripts to do things and you can use like polybar if you want there's also it's also like a lot of other functionality so i know if you want for instance Click on this with your mouse, you can't, you can't click on the workspace and move with your mouse, like again in Qtile. In this case you have to only use your keyboard to move with the workspaces. And then of course that's about that, uh, as far as the bar goes. Uh, so yeah, how about tiling, how does tiling go? So tiling is very simple, uh, so you can do... Uh, so it's in it very simple so you can you know keep on kicking opening windows and so you can see we have one open here one open here and one open here and then if we add more you can see they're kind of gathering up on the right so you can see it's like a master and stack layout so it's you know positioning one big window and not for small windows and then we just keep adding them but what you can also do is we can make more rows for them like this so you can you know adjust how you want them to spread out uh, by using hotkeys you set up. I have set mine to dot and uh, comma. Then you can also adjust the size of the big window. So if you want to make the big window smaller, you can, and you can make it bigger, and so on. So you can adjust these things like that. Then you can also make a window, uh, well, Floating, so you know you can make floating windows. You can also to do you you know use your remote key and T to make it uh, not floating anymore, and the same key of course makes it floating. So there is floating functionality if you want to use that. It's better than in Qtile actually. I really think the uh, floating works for us in Qtile. It's a bit chunky, like when it plays the window backing again, it doesn't. It has a bit of chunkiness to it and. Actually moving it around, it's, you know, taking it off, it's all a bit just chunk. But here it works way more smoothly. And uh, there's a default key binding to put it back as well. Whereas in Qtile you had to put it back outside of the Qtile, as you actually set the floating with key binding, you have to do it with your mouse and then set it back to the key binding. And it's just, it's a better implementation here uh, with the floating windows. Now what other window layouts does it have besides this one? Uh, it has one of these, so it's basically putting, you know, I'll turn H up here to show. So yeah, it runs just like a wide thing and these, is, you know, separate things. And once again, you can keep adding rows to the small windows and you can, of course, adjust this big one again. So it's horizontal, vertical, master stack layout, and it also a full screen layout. 
So those are the only three, only three you have. But there's also something else cool you can do. So let's say we want to make this window full screen. Well, we don't want to actually change the entire layout. You can use a key binding to actually make only one window full screen. So, you know, we can still make everything else not full screen. But we can make a single window full screen. Of course, as I start moving around, it becomes no longer full screen. But you can see you can actually make a window temporarily full screen while you actually are using a layout or these master stack layouts. So that's really cool. Uh, you can actually, you know, that like full screen thing is super useful. It's really nice. I, I like that it's there. It makes things a lot easier and very convenient. Once again, I wish Kutal had that, though it's very hackable, so I guess you could attack the Kutal if you wanted to. But I haven't missed it too much. And now if you want to, um, you know, close this up, I can use some key bindings. And that's that. So yeah, the layouts are very simple. It's not as, uh, you know, versatile as something like Qtal. There's only three layouts, whereas in Qtal they only use three layouts. There's way more of them in existence. There's probably like 10 or something. Anyway, there's way more layouts available in Qtal. Uh, in this one, there's only master stack layouts and the full screen layout. I mean, I like the temporary full screen mode thing. That makes things super convenient. It's uh, very nice to have, uh, but the yeah, idea is there are more layouts altogether. It's a bit lacking in that regard. And I think this topic that comes across in other areas. So, you know, I'll, I'll open up the um, config file. So it's called uh, spectrewm.conf with the before, of course, a CDM file. And you can see it's text file. You set things uh, to like many something. Oh, by the way, it used the menu, so you know if you want to open up uh, bars, it brings a menu like this. Also, I also set up a custom menu to do uh, the power thing. I'll explain these later on. I just want to go over the extra config file first. So you can see we can configure like the mode key and the basic things, and we can configure where key keyboard map file is. And then, you know, you can do a bunch of like on off options. It's a bit like Ice Window Matcher, except, uh, uh, well, it's documented versus the Ice Window Matcher, is which the problem is like in Ice or in this config file, in Ice Window Matcher, all of the like, you know, like your all lines are actually commented, so you know what they are. Here they aren't. There is a man page that explains most of it, but the explanations aren't too good, and uh, you know, it can be a bit confusing in that, although the actual layout here, the configure if is simple enough. Uh, so I just, told, I just wish the man page was a bit better uh, explaining things. And also there could be like, has, you know, comments explaining what all of these are in each line here, like they are a nice window matcher. So otherwise it's a very similar configuration mechanism. You, you know, you set some options and of course, limited. It's all like Qtal, where you're just going to do whatever the hell you want. You need to actually follow whatever limits are set here. Uh, so, yeah. And you can see the bar configuration. You can see it's, uh, you know, you can see the colors and stuff, but you can't really add functions to it too much. You can see here's like the format. There's like a few things you can add here, uh, but it's not too much. It's quite limited overall. You can also like uh, indicate, work, like give workspace names and stuff if you want, and you can display names instead of numbers and things like that. And why not? There's also a bunch of like multi screen. So you can, you know, have like one, like if you have multiple monitors, you can have one monitor open, like one workspace and another, another workspace and so on. So there's a way to work with things, but it's it's still limited overall. Just something to note of here, you can like assign programs uh, to, you know, what you want them to do. So, for instance, I have my menu program. I have it set to this G4D menu thing. So, this is something that I'm using. Now, by default, it's a normal D menu command. Um, it kind of matches your theming and stuff. But the problem is that in here, you would have like all of your all of your executables. That means also like all of your command line stuff and everything else. You have all of your command line like commands. You have all of your everything pretty much on that menu and it's way too bloated that way so it's just shade for the menu thing allows me to only show desktop apps so that's why i'm using it i mean i only need to show desktop things instead of having to use like you know actual uh you know commands and stuff there's still some like you know duplicate things like you know music player on top of the actual app and things like that 
but it's not a pretty big issue now and uh, yeah so that's that then you have um uh, like i have a screenshot to be at uh, my actual screenshot with this gnome screenshot then i have set my this custom one it's called p mini so it's far mini i showed before um that's something that i found random form uh so there you go but it's uh Basic it's script to quickly actually uh, power menu. I'll find the forum link and put it in the description uh, of the video as well, I guess. Uh, so you can actually find hardware I got it from. I so I got one like I got like a script and modified it to match what I needed. I also asked for some menu ghost or some stuff I needed to change. So by default, it wouldn't follow my theming for some reason. This say for the menu thing. So I had to go and manually change the uh, main.hh file in the source code and compile it with my own custom one to actually work. All I did was change like the D menu command in it. But I changed it to actually match my theming so I can go to go and show that. So you know if I go to I have it uh stuff in a file so uh Uh, let's see where is J for DMU desktop, and then I also I, I uh, made two directories of this is editor, and this one should be directory, and then here we should have a main dot no which is src, and then we have to have main dot hh. So you can see instead of just having like the menu command, we actually have all of this stuff to actually match my theming. Uh, so yeah. I have mentioned this on my dot file, so you can just see what the show command is through that. Also, I'll just look at the uh, power menu. No, that's not it. Here we go. So you can see it's a very simple script. Uh, it's just set to... No, that's the wrong file, actually. Let me see. Uh, that's the wrong one. So let's see, alas, what do I have? No, oh god, um, what do I have in here? I guess it's just a power menu file then. So yeah, it's like this. So you can see the sets like this. It's a very simple thing. So I just have to like pick this one off the internet, change my actual commands for setting off to match my system. And then, you know, just, you know, uh, to use like the devices of sudo for example and then I uh, added like my own custom d menu command here again to match my theming so it's a very simple thing I'll link the original script uh, already formed where where this in the description so you'll be able to find it so yeah it's a bit of a hassle but it's done now and as far as bugs and stuff go there aren't really any it works perfectly fine um, so it's a very smooth and nice working window matcher overall I had some issues with it but I fixed all store configuration so it is a configuration problem. Oh, there is actually one thing. So if I have a Firefox and it restores Windows back after it's shut down, it will open up like a tidal layout and leave the rest of the screen black. That's not good. So I have to disable like restoring Windows like big time in Firefox uh, for this purpose. But uh, besides that, it's fine. Uh, so yeah. What are my thoughts? I think it's good, it works well, I like it, I'll be using it for now, but the, I, it does have the issue of, you know, well, it's, it, ha, it has a very limited customization in comparison to something like Qtab, which is very hackable and very editable. Besides that, I don't have problem, but it is, you know, a minimal and uh, kind of set up, a kind of limited window matcher. So with that, leave your thoughts down below and see you around.